Hey, to all my female baggage droppers out there, I have a question for you. Do you like gold or silver? Well, at Brienne and Company Jewelry Store, you can find anything that you like. That's right. Brienne and Company is a jewelry boutique that has durable minimalist jewelry. She uses genuine pearls, local shells and sea glass, natural gemstones, and of course, precious metals. And these are all quality handcrafted designs by Brienne Light herself. Go and visit her at her website, brienneandco.com, or go to her Instagram that's always popping, at Brienne and Company. Thanks, Brienne. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all of my baggage droppers around the world, welcome to another episode of the Drop Your Baggage Podcast, where we talk to people that are dope, that can bring you hope, and teach you a technique that can help you cope. And today I have, oh my goodness, I think one of my favorite guests of all time, one of the goats right here, Anuhea. <laughs> but, hey, but if you are on Facebook or YouTube, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And if you're on a podcast platform, give a brother five stars and give me some feedback as well. Now, with my guest today, Anuhea, she is from Maui and is a Hawaiian contemporary singer-songwriter, made her recording debut in 2009 and hasn't stopped since. She's had songs ranked on the billboards, world albums, heat seekers, and independent charts, has had has won multiple awards and had a number of radio bangers and toured all over the world and shared the stage with some OGs. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you Anu Heya. What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> I do. Hey, uh, thank you so much for showing up for your divine appointment today. Oh man, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, gosh, it's gonna be such a blessing. Um, I reached out to Anahe a, a while ago and asked her if she would be on the podcast, and she was nice enough to say yes, indeed. As long as I was on her podcast, so yeah, you know, it's about to go down. And as far as like uh, us making sure that people are able to know that we are allowed to speak about our feelings and that we are allowed to feel things and that we uh, that there's support out there and different techniques to help each other out. Amen. Now, I would love to just start from the beginning uh, when you were just starting to perform over at Kamehameha. <gasps> yeah, I think maybe my performing started a little before that, like the summers um, after elementary school, I started getting into musical theater. That was mm -hmm. my first like love of the performing arts and at all. Mm -hmm. um, I took like some ukulele lessons in a summer program and, and I learned how to play the ukulele a little bit, but mm -hmm. I pretty much um, got into musical theater through my stepmother, my dad's wife, who is like a choreographer and a part of the Maui Academy of Performing Arts. So that was like, I felt like I found my people, my little dorky little tribe you know like I didn't quite fit in anywhere but I loved Spice Girls and I was a white girl but I was Hawaiian so like <laughs> where do where, where what what are you I'm like I'm a thespian and and yep I was in James and the Giant Peach I was in Androcles and the Lion all kinds of fun little children's musicals and I swear that shaped me to be who I am a hundred percent one of my best friends in the world shout out to Rebecca Hansen she's she directs a lot of the plays here on the island of Kauai and she it, it, she always tells me about the positive effects that like theater um has on children so oh, like God, yeah. what positive effects do you see that like theater had on you oh boy um it's it's almost like frustrating talking about it because I want my son to be in it so badly, yeah. but because of COVID, there's so many restrictions on this Island. There's nothing for him to do. And like, so the past two years, he's been asking me, mom, I want to go in. I want to do plays and stuff. I'm like, I know, son, I know, but no, it had so many positive effects, like just with the confidence that you get um, with being on stage, learning how to speak, speak, clearly and articulately um learning how to sing you know i kind of learned voice parts and do re mi fa so la ti do like singing all of those little things with the lady on the piano can help you to learn to be a better a better singer and yeah you make lifelong friends we, we had a lot of fun with the little little theater kids and i still keep in touch with some of them that's mm -hmm. awesome so like yeah. You you've transit you transitioned though from being a thespian to going out on your own and you moved to San Francisco for a little while. And how was that? Um, how was that journey going over to the to the mainland for a while? 
um, yeah, my journey going to San Francisco has been oh, one of the most amazing memories of my life. Um, this was after I graduated from high school. I went to college in Orange County for one year yeah. and I, I didn't like it. It just wasn't for me. That city just didn't have as much creativity as I was longing for. And mm -hmm. so I actually dropped out of college, went back home or dropped out of that school, went back home to Maui and, and did a little bit of community college back on Maui and then decided the school of life needed to teach me a little bit. So I didn't have a job. I didn't have um, any money. I just had my car and a dream and I shipped my car up to San Francisco and had the most amazing time within one month. I got so many parking tickets and my car broke down on the golden gate bridge. I was like, Hey, I don't need a car in this city. So I sold it and then just used public transportation and just went to every concert I possibly could. Uh, had so much fun working and turning 21 in that city. I, I made lifelong memories and lifelong friends. I just loved San Francisco. Sounds killer, yo. And like what you did there more than anything is you honed your skills when it came to writing. Uh, yeah. Go for it. Tell me about like how it was with um, the re repetition and, and the practice of writing your own songs and doing yeah. what you love. One of the only friends that I knew when I moved up there was this rap duo that happened to live on Maui for a little while. So they, you know, kept in touch with me. Oh, if you ever come to San Francisco, hit me up kind of thing. So I'm like, hey, remember me from Maui? I moved here now. It was this rap duo, this like Asian boy and this Jewish boy. They were like, they were, they were a rap duo and they mm. were so talented and so good, but just not your typical, what you would think. And, uh, they, they took me under their wing big time. They helped me produce a bunch of songs that I had been writing. We, they helped me show me which gigs to do, like, you know, where to go to open mics and what, which, which coffee shops are the coolest. And, and they went to concerts with me and stuff like that. And I actually lived with one of them for a little while. Cause I was homeless and I couldn't find a place to live. And, and just those, those guys, those, um, the evolutionaries is what their name was. They, they helped me so much. Brian and Lewis, love you guys. Brian Kambayashi and Lewis Klingelhofer. I love you guys. <laughs> uh, shout out to the evolutionaries. I mean, but yeah. one thing that obviously was in your favor was the fact that you had an adventure spirit, but also that you had hustle as well, that you were no slouch and you were willing to get down and work hard. And you did that by getting yourself out there like people are doing on Instagram and YouTube nowadays. You did that on MySpace, out of all things, back in the day. Yeah, there was no there. YouTube had just started. So yeah. I think right when it just started at the, in 2000 and I don't know, six or seven, I had posted a few pictures. Uh, I'm sorry, videos of me singing and stuff, but that was still the very, very early days. I think Garage Band was my was my best friend because I, I bought a new laptop and I started recording demos on Garage Band, and that that helped a lot. You put your music on MySpace, yep, and then you could like kind of there was like a top top like ranking within your city. So mm -hmm. like when I was living in Hawaii you know, to try to get that top three position for an independent artist was always like the goal, you know, and a couple of times I did, I'd like dabble back and forth between number four and number three. I'm like, I made it. I'm top three, you know, independent. And my girl Kimmy A was always like up there too. My, one of my best friends. So it was nice having another, another person that was doing my, th her thing as well, but in a totally different path. Her path is, was in Jamaica. She was on tour with Barrington Levy and doing all kinds of different things. So, but she might be another person for your podcast someday. That's my best friend, Kimi A. Minor, who's also a singer in Hawaii. Yeah, connect us. I would love to have her on the podcast, you know, being a blessing over here with dropping people's baggage. Yeah, man, she'd love it. But like, how, what was the struggles that you went through being like, like right in the beginning of your career? Of course, you know, you went through the struggles of being homeless for a little while and not having a car, but like, what were some of the internal struggles that you went through? Let's see. Um, I think just finding places where I belonged mm -hmm. was always, has always been the issue for me, uh, figuring out where I belong, you know, I think that's like a common problem for, for me from when I was little all the way to even San Francisco. And then, you know, like coming home for Christmas and then, you know, falling, go, go, going back to the old place I used to work. Mm -hmm. Um, I met, 
a new manager that worked there. And then he ended up becoming my boyfriend and like convinced me to stay and not go back to San Francisco. And Mm -hmm. I think like relationships have really guided me and told me where to go. And it's kind of unfortunate sometimes. Maybe I would like to have known like what would have happened if I, if I stayed in San Francisco, but no, I'm, I'm thankful for the path, but just like always seeking, oh, sorry, always seeking for that belonging was what, what has always like led my decision-making, I think. Yeah. Life, yeah, hundred percent. Me too. Like you know, I I moved from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I mean, I I, I of course saw different opportunities, but you know, a, a lot of people, a lot of listeners know I never met my father before, and you know, I would move from place to place looking for acceptance. So you know, when I went to Kentucky, I was looking for a group of people that would accept me, and then I got married and moved to Canada for a little while up in Northern Ontario, and that that's where I was searching for acceptance. And luckily, luckily, I. Uh, like I ran into a lot of great people here on the island of Kauai and like I, I found a group of people that just love me for me. Um, but it's that, that you know, you you just look, looking for that place where you can just be you and feel mm-hmm. right and on the world and feel right in the in the world. Totally. You got it. Like, that's exactly whatever. And um, and that that kind of trans- translates into the relationship that I've created with my fans mm-hmm. like we've created our own little group i even have like songs about it like when the seats are taken you can mm-hmm. sit with me like when the team's all full we'll start our own league like it's kind of like the misfits coming together and making our own little club that only that everyone's invited to you know like that's the thing that with my clubs like patreon and stuff like i i create them just to have some sort of a buffer between like the riffraff that's out there when I share my soul, you know, like mm-hmm. on, on these podcasts that I do. And then even these like live streams that I do, mm-hmm. but otherwise I do want to include everyone because I know how important that is to feel included. I want to include as many as I can, but sometimes you got to charge a fee so that they don't, <laughs> so that they're not saying, show me your boobs in the <laughs> middle of a podcast recording. <laughs> Hell nah. <laughs> hey, real talk, okay. Real talk. Hey, yeah, you you know know how many people ask to see my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so yeah, like that's why I became a middle school teacher, quite honestly, because I had such a rough time in middle school. I felt like I'm not enough. And I was such a class clown because I was a people pleaser and just looking for acceptance, like I said earlier. And the like I just really had a rough go in middle school, not willing to be my true authentic self and to be to have a peace within myself, always thinking about what somebody else thinks and what's the cool thing. So that's why I became a middle school teacher so I can help guide. How it goes. Yes. Yeah. Like you are amazing. Middle school is so rough for me, too. Like when I went to Kamehameha in seventh grade, like I. I used to have to hide in the bathroom. Like after lunch got let out, I we had assigned seats for lunch. And that was like a thank God thing because if there was no assigned seats, I wouldn't have had anybody. Like I had no friends, zero. And then after lunch, I would go and hide in the bathroom and like just pretend to like be washing my hands for like 10 minutes until the bell rang. And I was like, thank God. And then I could go to school. I would like pretend to be sick. And I think I probably was making myself sick, like have a cold so that I would get to go to the, the nurse's room and just like hang out in there all day long. Cause I was like, just so miserable in school and girls are mean. I got hazed in the dorms. Um, I was very like underdeveloped. Like I was young for my grade. So like girls are having like their periods and stuff. And like, I was still like flat, ch- like young, <laughs> like young mentally and like young, maturity wise like mm-hmm. I, I just that was not a cool thing at all you know you wanted to to be cool you you had it together my parents were poor you know so i yeah i appreciate cuz teachers definitely were and dormant my dorm advisors were the ones that helped me through those bad times and so to have a teacher like you who might know what what it's like like you probably helped change some people's lives I know you did. You definitely changed some people's lives while you, while being a teacher. So uh, good on you. It was, <laughs> thank you. The, um, it's, it's the biggest blessing of them all for me, you know, to see like that I could help give somebody that little bit of confidence that, Hey, whatever you're going through right now, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And what 
in six, seven years, these people are going to be gone and you're going to be on your way through life. And you're not, you don't even have to talk to these people anymore. Like this, all this doesn't matter. So do you be you and explore, you know, do what you want to do. That, yeah. that was the biggest lesson of all that I tried to always teach. And then now you made a transition though from being that, that, the person that wasn't the cool kid to being the cool kid after you got signed, you know what I mean? Like, well, you know, you, you found your way, uh, your, your dad, your auntie had, had uh, and a, um, a man, na- a man that was, uh, in, uh, N- Nalini Jenkins. That's my auntie. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so and Nalini- Warren Wyatt is her partner. Is that what you see in there? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. That was a blessing because they, that was my dad's sister. She was a Nalani Jenkins. She's a, she's a singer in her own um, band called Naleo. And that was kind of the only cool thing about me, I guess you could say, <laughs> is that I had a famous, somewhat famous, like, you know, in Hawaii, auntie. Um, she would, you know, buy me, buy me nice things sometimes because my parents were so broke. Like she'd buy me like a, a Roxy jacket or something like that. So that was like my one little like saving grace. Mm-hmm. Um, but but she's a she's a tough lady. Like she gave me an opportunity to, you know, to sign with her new label that she had just started. But mm-hmm. other than that, it wasn't like I had any sort of like hand up. Like I had to do it all myself, and that that was short lived. You know, we we were we were together in the label for a while, and now I I, I consider her a, a lesson, and I'm thankful for that time that we spent together. But we don't work together anymore. It's like. Yeah. It, you can only rely on others so much. You got to rely on yourself. I think at the end of the day, 100%. that's a lesson that I, I learned too. Um, but I continued working with Warren Wyatt for a long time up until this year. And that's a little sensitive subject to talk about for me, but it's kind of part of, well, why I'm here and dro- trying to drop some baggage, yeah. but also it goes along with that whole theme of trying to find where I belong because right now I don't have a manager after 12 years of working with him. I decided to take a break because there were certain things that were going in the wrong direction. And this, the foundation wasn't solid as far as like finances and stuff like that went um, for 12 years, you know, I need something solid. I need to start thinking about my future and like Mm -hmm. my kids and my retirement. Like I wanted a solid foundation for those things. So I needed to get away from him and now i'm alone i'm independent af right now (laughs) so scary it's so scary imagine like doing something that you've done for your entire career and then i don't even know how everyone can relate like imagine having a business partner your entire career and then all of a sudden you have to do everything on your own and it's it's really hard you have to learn all the things that they they knew but it's also empowering at the same time i'm feeling more confident every day i think really well, not really no <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell nah. <laughs> you horrible days actually and today is one of them i'm having like a horrible day <laughs> hey i can't wait to help you feel better we're gonna drop a bunch of baggage not just here on the air but afterwards as well i'm gonna, I'm gonna hook you up no worries i got you Aww, thanks the um no what i was talking about was like you know your album you know the, the bigger album release where you know you sing one of your my favorite songs come on over love and you know you really started seeing a bit more of the success you know you've already uh, always uh, had success but you know then things started catching momentum and catching fire how did that feel so good um all the hard work that you put in for years and years finally like people are paying attention but no matter who is it was the fans that i always felt the most connection with and just feeling like your song that you wrote about your own life is having an effect on someone else's life in a positive way. Like that's the most amazing, fulfilling feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. And to know that it's not just having an effect, but it's like helping them. That's like incredible. And that made you want to do it again. And of course there's the business side where the manager is saying, okay, you got to write a hit. You got to make sure it's three minutes and 30 seconds long and has a beginning, middle and end. But then you know, then there's my side where I'm wanting to convey the story and the message. So it's a, it's a give and take and, and, and it was a good, a good dynamic for a long, long time. And it was working. We did a lot of cool things because of all this um, success with the songs. I got to tour all over the world. I got to perform on military bases. Um, I got to 
like play with some of my favorite artists, like Bruno Mars and Jack Johnson. I got to open for Bruno Mars on Maui. And that was like an amazing moment too. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like coming home to this Island that I, at the same place that I used to do these children's plays at the same exact mm-hmm. stage. <laughs> and I'm over here opening for like Bruno Mars, like what? This is so cool. <laughs> yeah. And so like, you you you're seeing all this momentum all right but let's get back to like how you're feeling now one of the things that you said is that you're building your confidence but also that you're learning a lot of things what are some of the things that you're learning about yourself now being independent and you know going through this journey on your own yeah man so much like not not just not only have i changed my management and not, I'm not working with one anymore, but Mm -hmm. I was also going through a lot of personal changes too. Like my husband, like we just got married and then we lost a baby shortly after we got married. And then shortly after that, he went away to go play baseball. And then shortly after that, I had to move by myself. And then shortly after that, I like changed my entire medication that I was on. I was on just a little tiny, like anti-anxiety medication for a while, but that was causing me to like act crazy. So they, they took me off of everything and that was causing so much anxiety. It was almost paralyzing. So basically what I'm trying to get at is there were so many changes, like so many, too many to happen at once. And I think that that's where I'm at right now. Like if it was one change at a time, mm-hmm. I might have the, the ability to like go through the stages of grief with each one, like say goodbye to my manager and go through those motions, Um, say goodbye to, you know, the baby and go through those motions. But instead it was like, boom, 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 right after another, like within within a matter of like months, like four months. And I'm still like real, I'm still in the middle of it right now. So I like, I'm at the verge of tears, like all the time, like it's crazy, but I have a dog and he's the cutest. (laughs) Yes, indeed. (laughs) He's always and one of your the lights of your life has also been your son, Ikenna, yeah. Yes, yes, he is. He's um my husband just left to go pick him up from school. So now we're really alone. And I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, um he he's the light of my life for sure. He's so sweet and he's so hilariously funny. Like I said, he wants to be in plays and stuff. So I want to give him that opportunity to show show his truth of self out there yeah. to the world. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, here on the Drop Your Baggage podcast, we talk to people that are dope that can give you hope and teach you a technique to help you cope. And I'm excited to, you know, go through this technique to help you cope. It's called the mental and emotional release, uh, uh, the mental and emotional release process. Um, it is a neuro linguistic programming process. Now, neuro linguistic programming is a mental martial art. Uh, it's it's a, a group of ways to or a group of techniques to help you communicate with your heart and mind in order to get what you desire. Hey, what's up to all my baggage droppers out there? Look, do you want to be more productive, have more clarity, have more focus and have more determination than ever? Or do you want to be more powerful, really believing and conceiving your dreams so you can go out and take action and achieve your highest goals? Or do you want to have more peace? getting rid of those triggers of anger so you can have more self-control or moving from fear to limitless power or letting go of sadness so that happiness and gratitude can shine through you. Well, join the Drop Your Baggage Challenge and experience years of personal development, years of therapy, and have multiple breakthroughs instantaneously. Go to dropyourbaggagechallenge.com and join today. Don't wrestle with those negative voices in your head anymore. Join the Drop Your Baggage Challenge and silence those voices and totally shift your life forever. Go to Drop Your Baggage Challenge. Go to Drop Your Baggage Challenge dot com today and totally experience a transformation in your life that you could have never even imagined. Are you up for the challenge? I know you are. Go to Drop Your Baggage Challenge dot com and join. And I'll see you on the other side. Peace. But with you, I can't, I can't, I'm, I've, I've been excited to just help you drop your baggage. Uh, I've been anticipating this day for a while. Now, w- w- today you wanted to let go of the fear of the unknown. 
Can you talk about that? I had mentioned, yeah, when we did my podcast, you helped a girl. um, And I thought that that was going to be my, my choice as well. Fear of the unknown, just because, I mean, just as I explained with all of the changes that I have going on in my life and the chemical in like the chemical balances from the insides of me to the physical changes around me. And then knowing that I have still so much coming up this year, in fact, that I need to handle, I have no idea like how I'm going to do it. Like how the hell am I going to pull it off? Like, I don't know. And that scares me so much. You said it, it scares you. Like, what are some of the things that like go through your mindset as you prepare for all these different things? Um, overwhelming sense of of like just um dread. Um, I have I have this tour that's getting booked because I managed to keep my booking agent. So although I don't have a manager, like the booking agent still wanted to work with me. I mean, everyone still wants to work with me. It's just, I don't have a person that's helping conduct like everyone, Mm -hmm. like how I had when I had my manager. So Mm -hmm. all of those emails and, Oh, can you send a W nine? Can we, who do I talk to for the tour manager? Like the, all of that's coming to me. And so it's just very easy to get overwhelmed because I'm supposed to be focusing on the artist part and not the management part. Right. So that there's that, the overwhelmingness. Um, and then also like the past couple of days, I've tried to gather my band and get my band together. And two of my beloved band members have freaking canceled on me they're canceling this whole tour so now I need to find for whatever reason one of them just had got got a dog and they're moving so I don't know I don't think that's a good excuse but he's (laughs) you're like no it's not (laughs) no it's not at all (laughs) and he's like my OG like he's like my G like my right hand man I call him my left hand man because he's left handed and he's on my he's my bass player so he's always on my left hand side Mm -hmm. And he was a best friend. Oh, that's another like talk, talk about like the, the um, morning, like he was, he was my roommate and best friend and bass player. And he was my roommate and he moved away. Mm. So that was another like loss. Like I felt like, oh, like I'm, I'm lost. But anyway, that's one. He, he canceled this tour. And then another one was because he's starting like a children's after school program. So mm. I guess that other one is noble. That's my drummer. But I'm still like, what am I going to do? So I still don't know what I'm going to do. The, the, the unknown, I am fearing it because I don't know who to, I called a couple of people that haven't called me back yet, but I need a band. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> anybody play drums out there? <laughs> call me. <laughs> no, right. Hey, you can go ahead and go to Anuhe, uh, uh, what, yeah, Anuhe Jams, <laughs> and send your videos. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like, um, uh, how did how has it affected you uh, in any ways besides business? This fear of the unknown. Oh, every every which way. Oh boy, besides business, the fear of the unknown has affected me um, so much. I mean, my business is is my personal. Like I, as an entrepreneur, like I live and breathe my business. So there's no turning it off when like, when I clock out. There is no clocking out it's more of like working as much as I can while I can, and then trying to rest when I can too. But then, you know, there is no off switch Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that, that sucks. Sometimes I think I should be giving myself an off, you know, a rest opportunity. I know how important that is. I mean, my therapist says it's important. It it (laughs) definitely, it is important to, I mean, like to, if you were an employee, say like a, a subway, you know what I mean? Or somewhere else you'd have at least two days off, at least one day off. Right. You know? So to have a few hours off or several hours off, it's important. So because you, you need space in order to expand yourself and your consciousness and True. your ideas. Yeah. And if you being an art, being an artist, how can you make art when you're always on the grind? Dude, I'm always on the grind doing silly things, things that I don't want to be doing. So I'm working on it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, it's time to to expand and, and get these things off your mind so you can have the bandwidth to do what you do. Okay. For sure. Let's get it. So. All right. With this process, all you got to do are three things. All right. Number one, you got to use your imagination. Number two, you got to follow directions. And number three, you got to trust the process. Know that I'm your guide and I'll be leading you through this easily and effortlessly. We created your timeline, if I'm not mistaken. If your past could be to your left, to your right or behind you. Where's your past? Behind me. Where's your future? In front of me. Yes, indeed. That's what's up. Let's get it. Let's make you let's let's have you feeling a lot better. 
So this is, uh, so is it all right with your unconscious mind for you to, uh, for you to release this fear of the unknown today and for you to be aware of it consciously? It's all right for my, yeah, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Uh, what is the root cause of this problem? The first event, which when disconnected, that will cause this problem to disappear. If you were to know, when was the first time that you had the fear of the unknown? Oh boy, you're gonna get me crying already. Shit. I should have had like, I should have brought tissues. <laughs> Ah, can you edit this to make me look super cool? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got I got Final Cut Pro. I think that's what. Oh did. <laughs> shit! Yeah, you can like, take out the teardrops. Um, um, the fear of the unknown. Oh my god, you're gonna freaking make me lose it! I gotta keep it, dude. Can I grab? Go, it's go, 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 go. <laughs> anyway, I got it. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say I think it was when um. You knew it was good. You knew it because you know what? In our in our pre podcast interview, you were like, like you knew you were gonna dig into some things that were deep. Oh, it's so deep. I think it's my um. How come I can't even say it? The fear of the unknown, like when it was um. Ah, my parents got divorced okay. when I was eight years old. Mm-hmm. And that, and the the unknown. You didn't know, like, who am I gonna go with? What's gonna uh, happen? Yeah, my mom ended up moving away to um to Oregon with my two of my siblings, and then one of them stayed with me and my dad and his girlfriend and my girl my dad's girlfriend's. This is not the thespian one. This is another girlfriend mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, she's with an evil stepdaughter. So I felt like I was like Cinderella and. and um and then yeah I was super sad it was only for four months that my mom moved away and I I know that she needed to do that for herself but it was Mm -hmm. like really really hard to do so that's the same age as my son is pretty much like my son is seven and I can't I can't imagine leaving him so it must have been pretty bad for my mom if Mm -hmm. she left you know Mm -hmm. because yeah we were very close 100 percent and like with that unknown factor you like uh obviously right now it makes you upset and it's a trigger apparently. So like, how does it trigger you within everyday life as well? Um, I have like mommy issues forevermore. Yeah. I feel like it makes me want to um, spoil my kid and like be a really, really, really good mom yeah. to him because I feel like I kind of got gypped a little bit from having to deal with, that um custody battle i mean and they they were again the battle means that both of them wanted us you know mm-hmm. they wanted us also i mean i do have forgiveness and i understand um how hard that must have been for them but it's just really hard to go through that when you're a kid really, yeah really hard sorry what was your question <laughs> that, no you you answered it perfectly you answered yeah. it perfectly like that's how it affects you it, it makes it makes you a mom that's more present and it makes you want to spoil your kid, you know, it makes you want to be there at all those times, you know. So it's not just in your business, but it's also in your life with your family and, and everything. 100 percent. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. That fear of the unknown. Are you, <laughs> this being this is a simple, systematic guided meditation. So you can go ahead and close your eyes and relax and let me know when you're ready for the process to drop your baggage. Right. Is that don't know? No, you're fine. You know. Okay. Put my feet up. Mm. I really hope my kid doesn't come walking in this door. I'm doing this. (laughs) It's all good. Well, we that's what we want. We want this to go smoothly. It's gonna be. It's gonna go uninterrupted. It's gonna go great. Okay, I'm ready. All right, now. You can go ahead and close your eyes, relax, and let me know when you're ready for the process. Okay, I'm ready. Awesome. Now, just imagine floating up above your timeline and float deeper and deeper and deeper into the past above that first event in which you felt the fear of the unknown with your mother and your father and everything that was going on at the time. In time. And just float above that event, seeing that event from a third-person point of view as if though you were a fly on the wall. 
let me know when you can see that event. I can see it. Okay, now just stay right there, hovering above the event, seeing it from a third person point of view. Now, just ask your unconscious mind what it needs to learn from the event. The learning of which will allow you to let go of the emotions easily and effortlessly. Your unconscious mind can preserve the learnings so that if you need them in the future, they'll be there. Just tell your unconscious mind to preserve the learnings. And as you hover above that event, seeing everyone, seeing your mom and your dad and yourself and your siblings, know that this is an exercise of forgiveness and acceptance. Forgiveness for yourself and others and acceptance of yourself and others. Who do you have to forgive? What do you have to accept? Who do you have to accept? That's right. Focus your attention upon how hurt people hurt people. How you're a survivor. How we're all doing the best that we can with the resources and consciousness that we have. How we can't control anyone else's actions, but we can control our response. We can grow stronger and wiser and listen and, and learn from other people's actions and mistakes. Other people's actions have nothing to do with you. It's only a reflection of their baggage and whatever they're going through at the time. And we're better people than we were when those events occurred. You're a better person than you were when those events occurred. What is something positive and empowering you can tell yourself as that little girl and your mom and your dad and everyone else involved in the event with the consciousness that you have today that would allow the emotions to evaporate like water on the concrete on a hot summer day. And as you preserve these learnings, the emotions are starting to dissipate more and more until they're all gone. Just let me know when they're all gone. I'm telling myself that, that it's gonna be okay. This is only temporary and it's making you stronger. That's right. And you can see yourself from a third person point of view. You're hovering above the event. Yep. That's awesome. Good, good. Stay right there. I'm like, I'm working through it, but I think they're all gone because I'm just really putting it into perspective and knowing that they were doing the best that they could with what they had right there in their lives. And also they were hurting too. And also Something I can tell myself is that I won't make the same mistakes that they did on multiple th levels, like not just parenting, but even business wise, I can do better than my parents did so that I won't ever be in that position where you're desperate and I forgive them. Mm, that's right. Mm -hmm. Let me know when the emotions are all gone. I think they're gone. Yeah, good job. Very good. Now, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Now, don't don't <laughs> keep your eyes closed. Don't open them till I ask you to. You'll be all right. Okay. Now, just imagine floating up above your timeline and float deeper and deeper and deeper into the past above the dinosaurs during the prehistoric age. Let me know when you're there. I'm there. All right. Now, just imagine floating deeper and deeper and deeper into space to where space and the atmosphere connects. And imagine your timeline is the size of a fingernail. Let me know when you're there. Wow, okay, I'm there. All right, now just imagine floating there, weightless, in space, and ask yourself now, where are the emotions? Tell me, are they there or have they disappeared now? They're gone. Awesome. Now, just imagine floating down inside the event, sink through your own eyes as a little girl and check on the emotions. Tell me, are they there or have they disappeared now? They're gone. Awesome. Now, just imagine floating back above the dinosaurs and then float into space to where space and the atmosphere connects. Let me know when you're there. I'm back there. Okay. Listen closely. Float very, very high above. <laughs> Let me know when you're there. Sorry, they, they came home. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. 
Yes, yeah, I'm there. Okay. Now, listen closely. Float very, very high above your timeline, above each and every event in which you felt the fear of the unknown from birth until now in chronological order. Don't skip one event that has a charge on it. Preserve up the learnings and let go of that fear of the unknown all the way back to now. Go. I think they're all gone. You, you visited all the events? I did. I was going rapid fire. I had to go back in time a few times. Like I skipped some, went back, made sure they were in chronological order again. <laughs> <laughs> you make sure you preserve the learnings from each one, just like you did with the first one? Yeah. I mean, there's limitless times in my life that I felt the fear of the unknown, but the big ones, yeah, the big ones, I yeah. touched on them all. I touched on the big ones for sure. Good, good. All right. You can go ahead and flow down into your body and open your eyes when you're ready. Ooh, what do I want to no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <Whoa>. Welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. How do you feel? I feel lighter. Yeah. I feel like I have a tool in my arsenal. Yeah. That I can tell myself when, if and when, inevitably, I'll feel that fear again. I can just tell myself it real quick and evaporate, as you say, those feelings. Well, it won't be as intense as it was before. Because, t- like, uh, just for example, can you... Re- all right, do you smell bacon? No. Okay, yeah. I-, I asked that question to get your mind off the meditation. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Can you remember a time in the past in which you used to feel that old emotion? And go back and notice if you can feel it, or you may find that you cannot. No, I have a different view of it now. Yeah. I have like compassion. Yeah. And yeah. excitement, actually. Like, <laughs> like knowing, like with the unknown, like I can look at it as like a, this is exciting. Like what's next? Yeah. Rather than like a fear. It's not a fear thing anymore because I know it's going to, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Yay. do you, so the trigger, the trigger that you had, It's not as strong. So like, think about your, the the divorce between your mom and dad. Let's try that out. How do you feel about that now? I just feel bad for them. Mm. Like I, I looking at it way more as like a human, a human to human, like thing, like, like as an adult now myself, like I'm actually older than they were. Mm -hmm. They did this to me. So it's like, I gotta have empathy, like sympathy for them. So now you feel sad. Well, not sad, but sad, like, for them. Yeah, sad for them. Yeah. Yeah, like, I wish I could be there to help them now. But. Yeah, so that's the thing. That's all right. So so the thing about uh, this this process is that you go by all the different emotions. So the emotions that I release with my clients are anger, sadness, fear, hurt and disappointment, guilt, shame, and jealousy, Right. So uh, sometimes when you release one, right, you take one out and then the other one, it, it like heightens, you see, especially up, uh, upon your perspective. So now you have this like empathy for them. You have this compassion for them. You feel kind of sad, like, dang, like they were just kids, you know? And, and so the, the fear is gone, but now the sadness has increased a bit. You know, plus you got some sadness some going on with what you're you're going through as well. So after all of this is over, we'll release the sadness. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that movie, um, Inside Out. Yeah. Just yeah. Exactly. Yeah. One is driving, like one could be driving. Fear could be driving. Your sadness could be driving. Mm-hmm. No, no, no fear anymore, but maybe my sadness is driving. I want happiness to be driving. A hundred percent. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's what we're going to try to get you to. So we're going to release all of them. Anger, sadness, fear, hurt and disappointment, guilt, shame, all of them. Wow. Yeah, I got you. 
Thank you. <laughs> okay, so get out. Exhausted. Um, <laughs> all right. So, so um, I, I, I also, I want you to imagine going out into the future to an unspecified time in the future in which if it would have happened in the past, then you would have felt the fear of the unknown. But it's a future now. So see if you can find that old emotion or you may find that you cannot. I'm trying to think of like, the fear that I had before this gig that I just had this past weekend, it was like crippling. Mm. Now I have a different vibe to it. It's like more like you got this girl, you got this. And it's excitement, not, not fear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so I cannot find it. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, so the fear of the unknown is gone from that first event with your, your mom and dad and everything. And you saw it from a different perspective. You saw, you just see them as people now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can you dwell on that just a little bit more? Yeah. Um, um, like they were doing the best that they could for what they had in their situation. Mm -hmm but it's not like they gave us a bad life. They just made me really tough. So I'm looking at it with different, a different lens. Mm -hmm. It's, I had a roof over my head. We weren't homeless. You know, I was eating. I had, was going to school. I was being taken care of. I got to talk to my mom on the phone and stuff. It's not like she was out of my life. Like I can look at it with a different lens and see like, it wasn't that bad. It was just what my parents had to do to get me through to get their lives together again, mm -hmm. you know, and now mm -hmm. they're now they have their lives together. Mm -hmm. okay. And my grandparents to my kids. All right, right. Shout out to Mama Jenkins. Just met her the other day. <laughs> oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Like so the the fear of the unknown as far as uh the management situation, how does that feel now when you think about that? As far as the oh the management situation, oh boy. <sighs> did you go over that within your yeah just the fear of the unknown is it's more of like it's it's not gonna be like this forever it's mm -hmm. so temporary that's what's making me feel more reassured now mm -hmm. is knowing that that it's and this is so temporary and i'm gonna look back on this and like laugh and remember when I was doing it all myself and it's, it is making me stronger though. Just like how my parents made me stronger by putting me switching schools and making me ride the bus on my very first day of school. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I hate that. Like who does that to a kid? Oh my God, my parents did that to me. And, but now this is, this is like that in the sense of I'm stronger because I have to figure it out myself. I have to figure mm -hmm. it out, mm -hmm. but it's going to be worth it. That's right. That's right. Like the it's always the things that make you adapt, the yeah. things that make you stronger. In fact, um, let me look this up real quick. You ever heard of Darwin's Law? Survival of the fittest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh with Darwin's Law, it's misquoted all the time. Um, he says that. All right. So with the survival of the pit fittest, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Like that. Right. That makes me really happy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. that it's that 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 for you, you know, that's the thing that is going to carry you around the most is like you're you're able to adapt to you've been able to adapt since you were a kid from boarding yeah. over at Kamehameha to going to San Francisco to you know finding like that you can get your name out there through social media and going through these different things with record labels and and now you know without with uh you know you being without a manager is just you're adapting and you're making yourself that much stronger you're making sure that you're that much more fit to survive to the next thing and to the next yes i'm growing a tail <laughs> oh wait i'm losing my tail is that what it is yep hey on the hands growing out of my little tadpole body yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god shout out to evolution <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so all right all right so where do you how do you like um did you feel the emotions like you letting go of the emotions from all the different events yeah i did i felt that uh, I was can, crying them out. <laughs> <laughs> describe to anybody about how you shifted your consciousness or to everybody about how you shifted your consciousness and how, what that felt like. Yeah, well, I was definitely looking at it like you were de- describing us like a timeline. And then I would like zoom in to where this action is going down and like just try to look at it with that new perspective that you were saying and like literally some of the times that you were saying the words was exactly what I was just following and saying, like, look at it through hurt people, hurt people. Like, Oh yeah. Like that's why this, this happened. Mm -hmm. Keep that in keeping that in mind while I'm looking at a lot of the unknown, like it's, it's something you can't help to Mm -hmm. like, you can't help it. It just, it is what it is. And so just having a better attitude about it in general, and just knowing that it's going to be okay because because of all the other facts of the timeline that I was terrified about and then looking and seeing that, yes, it did turn out okay. Yes, it did end up okay. Yes, it was okay at the end. Knowing that that happened every other time makes you know that it's going to happen again like that. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I've also released my fear of the unknown a lot, especially being an entrepreneur, an educator who... I, when I was in teaching, I knew I was going to get my check on the first and the 15th, like, like clockwork, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden I'm an entrepreneur and I don't know when my next paycheck is going to come. So the fear of the unknown was definitely prevalent for me as well. So I I got the same, uh, the same revelation that you had, you know, that I made it, I made it to this time right here, right now that I'm always you know, I'm always protected. The universe protects me. The universe takes care of me. The creator takes care of me. Like, I don't really, I have to, what do I have to worry about when I've always been okay? You know what I mean? No matter what. So it kind of strengthens your faith in yourself and then whatever higher powers, you know, is out there, whether it be the universe or source energy (laughs) or whatever. I know totally. God, like I, I, it makes you think about God a lot in this process too. Like, whatever your God may be, it just kind of makes you realize that someone is watching over you and it's going to be all good. It's not, there's no way that it couldn't, there couldn't be something higher when things turn out over and over and over again. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. And as long as you're alive, that means you're okay. (laughs) (laughs) Right. You got another day, you know, especially, you know, for a person like yourself, you seem to make a way out of no way as well. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I try, you know. <laughs> very good. Very good. Where can you see yourself going forward without the fear of the unknown? Um, limitless possibilities. Um, just having being my being my own um biggest cheerleader rather than Mm. scaredy cat person like I want to let joy run the the ship rather than fear run the ship and like just be like you got this girl like look at what you've done so far like you got this and be like more excited about life again so the limitless possibilities that's what's up I got you make sure that uh we get rid of those negative emotions and limiting beliefs that are holding you back so you got joy running the ship but for you know, if we I'm glad that we started with the fear of the unknown. Thank you. Hell yeah, I got you. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> 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 uh, goodness gracious, and um, thank you all out there for listening and supporting. I really appreciate you so much. Um, if you are on the a uh, if you are on Facebook or YouTube, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. If you're on a podcast platform. Give a brother five stars and uh, give me some feedback. I don't hear. I, I need two things from you. Number one, we need to know where to reach you, your Instagram, all that good stuff. And also, number two, we need some words of wisdom. Woo. Okay. Um, 
You can reach me on my Instagram. That's probably the best way to reach me. I'm mm-hmm. Anuhea Jams, A-N-U-H-E-A-J-A-M-S. I have a website, which is anuheajams.com. It has that link up there. Or you can hit me up on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash anuheajams. And if you're asking me for a word of wisdom, oh my gosh, I have so many, but I've, I mean, I have so many, but no, <laughs> I have um, this one quote from Rumi that I read yesterday and I'm going to not quote it absolutely correctly, but it was something to the extent of looking in water and letting you need to let the water in front of you settle enough so that you can see the reflection of the stars and the moon in yourself. Like when you look in the water, you're going to see the reflection of the moon and the stars coming out of you. Why? Because you let the water settle enough. I feel like sometimes my life is so crazy and I'm always moving or worried or whatever. And I don't let the water settle enough. So that's my word of wisdom is to like, let the water settle and then look at how beautiful you are. Amen. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, from the drop your baggage podcast, take care of yourself and take care of one another. Peace.